The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Okay, guys, welcome to what will be an end of an era, not us. Oh. But this will be the last <laughs> podcast oh, that sure. we ever do in this little setup that, which by the way, was always meant to be temporary. This was like one of those times where I was like, guys, I don't have like a setup yet. So we're just going to do it in my living room and in my kitchen. And then like it just always remained. And it kind of looks like I'm starting a cooking show because the background is my kitchen. Oh, it's an end of an era. Congratulations for everything Thank you've been you through in this home. Thank you so much, yeah. Caitlin. We have Caitlin Bristow on the podcast. You guys, I've heard your screams, your desires, <laughs> your absolute um, manic messages me to have her on the podcast <laughs> and I am delivering nothing other than this beauty right here in my home drinking spade and sparrows cheers <laughs> cheers thank you for having me over I feel like this is like an iconic little room right here oh I do love it it's nice it's gonna be all packed up into pods very shortly I'm so excited to move I'm not excited about the like awkward little like month in between era where I have to put all my stuff in storage. I yeah. luckily, by the grace of the gods and our friend Worth and Cat, I yes. was able to find a, a intermediate situation for the month, which I'm so thankful for. But um, oh, so you have a month of my these these owners kicked me out and like I like begged and pleaded and they no. were like ten million dollars in your firstborn child's head <laughs> and you can stay and I was like I'm out of here. No way. Yeah. But, so for a month I have to put all my stuff in storage for a month. It's just like really it's. It's uh, I, rose is nice to have. I've got you covered, but it's it's okay. Yeah, and um, it's it was been a great house. Honestly, it's, it's always really cute. Look, there's one of the ants I was talking about. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, we'll just let them. Do you get um, all American Pest Control? Um, every three weeks. I get mosquito. Uh, I get I get mosquito Joe to come out. Mosquito Joe. Mosquito Joe is his name. It's really great and it's really reliable. And mosquitoes That's fucking great. love me. Do you ever go? Do mosquitoes like you or are you no, one they of those don't. bitches? Oh, I know, you know why I know? Because you're tan and hot. They don't like tan hot people. Come on. Because you're you know, tan and hot. It's fake tan. So is mine. No, you have olive skin. Okay, fine. And don't <laughs> deny it. But wait, <laughs> Jason is tan, olive skin, hot, and mosquitoes eat him alive. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Oh. Uh. So your theory sucks. <laughs> you're, you're myth busters. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I just feel like it's always bitches like me that are just getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. And here's the thing. I know they bite me. So like I wear on, on it's like the least sexy thing ever. I would love to like be wearing these like chic little like negligees on like vacation with James when we yeah. go to like, like St. Lucia. But instead I wear like long sleeves, long, long johns like that net. like, yeah, like I should get one of those because I was going to say I always cover up and they still bite my face. And they need to make some sort of bug spray that actually smells nice everything smells like yeah it's i don't know it's like really it foul bends my nostrils every well, time and it's just like such bad chemicals and i'm always like i don't care yeah like, rub it on slather it on but the chemicals take my spray tan off it's honestly a loose loose wow i know that's tough what it's really tough i've got a lot going alive. on <laughs> i've got a lot going on right now <laughs> and i'm just on? i'm just not okay <laughs> mosquitoes the summertime yeah so mosquito joe comes and taylor and mike they don't get bit by mosquitoes tan and hot and mm. they um they don't spray for mosquitoes at their house. And I always what? tell them that they're p poor. I'm like, you're fucking broke. You fucking don't spray for mosquitoes because y'all are poor. And bugs are bad in Nashville. Yeah, I know. And they're like, shut up, Shannon. And I'm like, if you don't get this house sprayed for mosquitoes, I'm I will not, not come over, over here anymore. Yeah. yeah, I'm serious. Why would you? And, and Taylor was like, Mike, Mike, shut the door. Like, she, you know, Shannon and mosquitoes. And I'm like, I'm serious. This house is not a home. Hey, but I get... I'm not like eaten alive by them, but I get bit once in a while. Does that count? No, bitch. Okay. No. Okay. Um, I get like bitten every once in a while by an ant. An ant? Ants bite? What? Oh, shit. Surely you knew that. Did they have them in Canada? Ants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not? Like, surely you know ants bite, right? Yeah, but they're nice in Canada. They don't bite. Of course they are. They're like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, excuse me. Sorry. They like make their way around you. Yeah, they're they like, just... they don't want to bother you. Yeah. That's so funny. Okay. <laughs> I needed to bring this up because I was just telling producer Courtney before you got here. You are the OG podcaster. Like podcasts began and end in my mind with you. And and you and I were talking about this beforehand because you just celebrated six years of Off the Vine, your yes. incredible podcast. And I am like, I don't, I think you were such a pioneer of entertainment podcasts. Wow. Beforehand, I think they were just like basically educational. And I think you should go back and find a timestamp of like when yours came out and then look and see what other entertainment podcasts came out. Because I feel like it wasn't a lot. I started my podcast because of Kelty Knight. Do you know who that is? No. She's from the Lady Gang podcast. Oh, I do. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she is, I grew up actually, her mom and my mom were best friends and I grew up dancing with her. No way. It was bizarre. And then she went on The Bachelor and got kicked off like week one. Oh. And then when I asked her about going on, she's like, don't do it. It was the worst career move of my she life. She went on before you. Yes. Oh my gosh. And then she was like trying to convince me to not do it and I did it anyways, thank God. Um, but yeah, she was 
was the one that suggested I get into podcasting because they were just getting into the podcast space. And she was saying that it's like really becoming a thing with entertainment. And I always wanted a radio show since I was little. Oh, and I was like, cute. what's my radio show? Your podcast was before you, you had your podcast before the? No. Bachelor? No. When did you go on The Bachelor? Eight years ago? Yes. Oh my gosh. Bachelorette was like 2015, 16. And then I started my podcast 2017. We moved to Nashville, I think around the same time, right? Probably. In 2015? I, I moved 2016, yeah. Okay, yeah. But oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing, you know, I have this like really vivid memory of you because you uh -uh. were like super famous when you moved here because you had just come off. Right, you it moved was here very, because Sean, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why, so I remember being like, oh my God, that is that, because I feel like the star power of bachelor bachelorette it was, was like a little I, like not to shade any like current ones but yeah. i feel like back then it was like the end all be all right and um i was like holy fuck there's that bachelorette girl caitlin <laughs> and then um and then i you had gotten on stage we were at tin roof and you had oh, gotten yeah. on oh, no at the time my friend dated chase rice and he was there singing or something i think and you were you like took the mic and got off stage and sang and i was that like thinking right. you were going to be funny but then you actually had a really good voice did i though yeah N yes no i don't believe you because back because yeah, then... i remember thinking like oh she has such big balls like i would never just get up and be like oh funny gosh. to sing and then it was like i remember being like it was good back then i would just get blackout and like go up on honky tonks and then i started taking like singing lessons and my voice coach was like don't ever do that again like what Why? if somebody's in the room and you just oh. blow it and they are like no i've heard her sing i was before. there and i've been <laughs> singing your praises <laughs> <laughs> kaylin bristow great voice from the moment i met her uh, i don't know about that um but That's i remember funny. i'd always do that sean and i would go to freaking every honky tonk every weekend and now i'm like how did i do that yeah i there's a lot of things that i used to do that i'm like how the that's fuck true. Did I used Same. to do that? And it's, I was just, I say on my podcast a lot that like every person that's like, oh, you just wait till you're my age. And you're like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, whatever. No, they're right. I, like, he, they're they're 100% right. I Not only do I not get eaten by mosquitoes, I don't get hangovers. You don't? See, I always said I didn't get hangovers, and people would always be like, you just wait. And I'd be like, I'm like pretty sure that I'm just like, I'm always dehydrated. We were talking about this. Like, I, I'm always dehydrated. I'm, I'm just like never, I don't, I don't ever feel bad. And then as of lately, I've been drinking the same alcohol, it's the same amount, like really nice tequila. And, and the you same, still get hungover? No, no, no. And it just came out of nowhere. Like, I just was like out of nowhere. I used to just throw up, at, like when I would get oh, drunk. Oh, God, no. Which would be like not ideal but like it, i would just be like i'd wake up the next morning and be like who wants to go to brunch and everyone would be like what the <laughs> fuck and you slept on the bathroom floor and i'd be like so oh my and gosh now, like i now i like maybe throw up maybe don't and now i wake up in the morning and i'm like <sighs> like I, tell my I, children i love them <laughs> like i'm like not okay i'm not fucking okay i have never in my whole life thrown up from drinking knock on wood not and once. you don't get hung over i feel like everyone told it's me bizarre. i didn't get hung over because i threw up it's it, I'm an anomaly. I don't understand it. Once in a while, I'll get hung over and it'll hit me and I'll be like, what? No, not today. Yeah. But uh, as long as I sleep eight hours, I'm OK. Wow. I I really, truly think that your body doesn't see alcohol as poison, which it is. It's delicious poison. Mm -hmm. um, every time I'm throwing up from alcohol, I'm literally like in my drunken super throwing up. I'm like, of course I'm throwing up. It's poison. I'm like, I've literally oh. poisoned myself. Of course I'm throwing up. My I, body's rejecting it. Kat clearly has not told you about my biggest phobia. Throw up? Yeah. <laughs> Me, I'm like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> like gagging noises. I'm like, oh God. Oh, no. Like I have a huge phobia of throw up to the point where I you get nervous every time like I eat to sushi. Throw up. I hate it more. I would rather feel nauseous for 48 hours than throw up <gasps> once and feel better. You're lying. Nope. Nobody, nobody thinks that. People but with you. The phobia. There's a name for us. Your I can't phobia what is, it is you throwing up, not other people. A Both. Any throw up. Cartoon throw up bothers me. Really? Like, I remember there's this Family Guy episode <laughs> where everyone was just vomiting in the Ew, living room like the whole time, gross. and I was like, uh, uh, and I was that like so gross. upset by it. Yeah, it's it's a whole thing. There's oh, a name for it. Yeah, what's the it starts with an E? Emetophobia. Yeah, emetophobia. I have that. You have it. Yeah. So when's like, the last I, time you threw up? Sorry, there's fruit flies. Okay, I'm um, vomit free since '93. <laughs> no. That's the year I was born. I bet you threw. I bet you threw up on November twenty second, nineteen ninety three. <laughs> Shannon I mean, comes into the world. Ugh. I actually threw up after a revolve trip because I got food poisoning on the plane home. And you had to. I you threw up on no, a plane. No. So on the plane, I was like, 
not feeling well, but I was like, well, it's first class. I better get red wine. So I like drink red wine. A sentiment that I understand fully. Of course. And I'm like taking advantage of all the snacks and the food. And then I, I get into- I could be a billionaire one day and I'd be like, oh, you're, it's, you're serving food, a three course meal. I just ate. Obviously, I'll take it. <laughs> Same. It could be like we're having the like plain tuna. And yeah. I'm like, mm. mm. It's that free though. It comes. Expensive. It comes with this seat. <laughs> yeah. That sounds luxe. Yeah, uh, it's chic. And so I got in the car on the way home, and I was looking at Cleo, and I'm like, I just don't. I I've never felt like this, and I feel like I'm gonna faint. And then we're at a red light, and I just open up the door. I was no, like, oh. really? <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. It was really bad. Wow. And that That's... was the last time. And that was, let's say, that was four years ago. That's that's nuts. I were you you said you got food poison. You weren't like drunk or anything. No, that's crazy. I if I have to throw up, like if I'm like even just a little bit nauseous and I visually see porcelain, I'm like, Bleh. like I really like, because like the toilet. I don't know if the toilet grosses me out or what, but like I I get I'm, that. I'm, I'm get not that. like a pukey girl. Like I don't throw up often, but like the, I was always the girl in my friend group that if she drank too much, like my body rejects like alcohol like in that sense it's like we're not gonna make you have the spins all night and be hungry I don't every even next get morning the spins i don't know what's wrong with me and i like jason will be like where does it go in your body because your earlobes that's why they're so big that's why they're <laughs> that's where she keeps all of her secrets if this fruit i'm gonna have to kill this fruit fly sorry um you know what that's really crazy i feel like you were destined to create an alcohol brand then because like alcohol, your body is like we love it I know it's sometimes I'm like I kind of wish I got like that because my fear of puking is so extreme that if I had that I wouldn't drink as much mm. but now I'm like well I might as well there's drink a no consequence there's zero consequence I feel great the next day there's no consequence wow what a life honestly uh, yeah okay well my consequences are hitting me lately and it's kind of a bummer I'm sorry that's okay I should come uh, out with a hangover pill oh I'd buy it okay. I am the consumer <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I really I will buy anything it's crazy me too so I've told y'all that I'm trying to save money recently. I am trying to be better about it, okay? But the cold hard facts are that I am simply always going to be buying food, things for my new house, and just straight up like everyday items like deodorant or toothpaste, right? Like I need these things. I've got to have those things. Also, also, maybe a little treat for myself every once in a while. Okay, sue me. But the trick that I've been using lately is Ibotta because you get cash back on all these things that you were already going to buy anyways. It's like free money. And with inflation right now, I think we can all agree that something as simple as uploading your receipt when you get back home from shopping is an easy enough task when doing that means that you get the money to spend and use towards something fun. The average Ibotta user gets up to $120 a year and just straight up cash back from shopping. That's a flight somewhere or a fancy steak dinner that you won't feel so guilty about. And it's just so easy. That's the thing about Ibotta. They give you real cash back, not all these point situations that other apps do. Real money, the green stuff that we know and love. You can put it in your bank account, PayPal, gift cards, whatever. But it's money, not points. Places that I use Ibotta the most are Sephora, you know, I'm a makeup queen, Lowe's for stuff for my house, Best Buy for my business expenses, and so many more. And right now, Ibotta is offering my listeners $5 just by trying Ibotta by using the code PROBABLY when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play and download the free Ibotta app and use code PROBABLY. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code PROBABLY. Like I see it. Oh my gosh, I actually am obsessed with your... Actually, you're really bad. No, I'm re no, I'm yeah. really bad. Mm -hmm. But I love your. Um, it's currently a highlight on her Instagram. If you go look at Ken K E N, can you not the dress that you bought? Do you know how many times I've fallen victim to that? Yes, like the what you order online versus what you get in the mail. Yeah, that sometimes was I don't even best. share them because I, I I know for fear that I know the general public will be like, you were a dumb bitch. A hundred percent, I am a dumb bitch all the time, but. Oh, did you see that TikTok or something? It's like, you are a dumb bitch with a really big heart. With a That's really me. big heart. That's me. <laughs> I always say on this podcast, I'm like, sometimes I think I'm smart. Sometimes I'm like, wow, I've really got my life together. Look at me being 29, doing all these things. I'm so intelligent. And then I always, always forget how big of a dumb bitch I really am. I'm such a dumb. I'm 37 more. and I have not gotten any smarter. You really don't look 37. It's kind of crazy. I'm 38 next month. Really? Yeah, I'm scared. When's your birthday? June 19th. Why would you be scared of 38? It's like the same thing as 37. Because it's just that much closer to 40, which I feel like sick, I'm supposed dude, to I have. 40 will be so sick. Don't you like get excited? I am excited for 40. If you look like you look, I'd be like, I cannot, I would want to be 40 sooner. I'm, I'm excited for 40. I'm not scared of the age 40. I'm scared of my eggs just being so shriveled and not having kids and like, 
Do you want to carry your own kids? Yes. You feel really passionate about carrying them yourself? Really passionate about carrying my own children. I mean, if I can't. No, my best friend Taylor's very passionate about bearing children and carrying them herself. I I feel like I would be one of those where I would just like be so spiritual about it. Oh, I could see that. Uh, If someone like offered to carry mine, I'd be like, oh my God, I would love that. What a sweet treat. Yeah. Really? Yeah, sure. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I'm just like no that's really sweet though that you want to bond with and i also have severe body dysmorphia so that says a lot that i would you really want the connection oh that's really sweet i do well i think uh, listen my current boyfriend his mom had a daughter at 40 and really oh my god she's like fucking killing it she still looks fabulous she had the most healthy beautiful baby girl three boys before the boy i mean it was just like i'm I'm not saying 40 is too old to have a baby i just you worry about yourself. Yeah, I, I worry it. about myself and I'm nervous. Even though I have my eggs frozen, I'm still nervous that my body is not going to do what it's supposed to do. Um, but I am excited to turn, to turn 40 because every year in my 30s, I definitely get more confident. Yeah. Just as dumb, but more confident in my stupidity. The conviction <laughs> that I hold over the dumb shit I say is otherworldly. Yeah. I say so many incorrect things with such conviction that I yeah. believe them. I'm so delulu. Like, I'm so delusional delulu. that I really believe myself. Yeah, but I, I think that you. if you are as passionate as you are, which I can really, like, feel through you, like, that you really want to have kids, like, you you will. Like the Every will, psychic I talk to. The universe will give you that. Is like you have a little girl that's on the way. Like what whenever I, you're yeah. ready. I'm like, oh, see, I love that. And then I'm like, am I ready? <laughs> one of my best friends is literally a psychic anagram. She's on the podcast all the time. And I, I asked her one time, oh my God, yeah, you've got to get in to see her. <gasps> She's, I was going to say her waiting list is really long, but she is technically like a celebrity medium. So you can probably skip it. Oh, cool. I've had some on my podcast and it always like, I'm like sobbing. No, she's incredible. I met producer Courtney through Anna Grace. Is she not the most incredible person ever? You don't have really? to like, James is so not woo woo. Like yeah, he's just not. Jason. And you like, I remember the first time we like all sat down, Anna Grace was staying here because she lives in Florida now. And uh, she started talking about Wait, like- Wait, Anna her- Grace is the psychic Yeah, one? yeah. Did I not say that part? Yeah, Anna Grace. Oh my God, yes. I thought you met this person through Anna Grace. No, I met producer Courtney through Anna Grace. Anna Grace is psychic. She's a medium. I she met her on the, the Akashic- 4th of July. Yeah, yeah, she reads the Akashic Records. Do you know what those are? The Akashic Records? No. She's like, it's, I didn't know until I met her either. It's <gasps> Can like, you ask her questions for me? Oh my God, 100%. <laughs> She's read me one time. I was kind of a little worried because she is my best friend. Yeah. So I was like, will you be biased and not know? But like, it's just so crazy because it's all, it's all so like definitive. You just like, no, you just believe her. You just look at her and you're like, oh, you're not trying to convince me of anything. Right. Like she's not, when James sat here and she talked about like her gifts and whatever, I was like, this is going to like most likely go in the realm of like, okay. James would never be disrespectful, but he would definitely right. like be like, you know what? To each their own. Yeah. I personally don't like literally believe a word she right. just said, but like to each their own. Oh my God. When we left, she's like, wow, how amazing that she really, truly just like is has this gift like it's so crazy and i was like what i can't believe her. you're such a skeptic like i love that yeah, oh yeah my God, jason's we got a skeptic and i'm like you i went i'm he's not a numbers he, guy of course he's a skeptic yeah he's too like practical yeah, yeah yeah logical on uh dancing with the stars i went we were going to grab a chipotle bowl and he was like going in and i just saw this random lady on the side of the street who was like 75 and like crystals everywhere and she was like so hippy dippy and i love. was like I was so attracted to going to sit there. I was like, oh my God. I was like, you get my bowl. And I went and sat down with her and she was like, she had no idea who I was because she yeah. was just starting to talk to me. And like, she, this girl doesn't even own a TV. Like she was just so brilliant. And she goes, something really big is going to happen for you in November. And I was like, what was in November? That's when I won the mirror ball. What, were you already doing Dancing with the Stars? Yeah. So you knew November was like. I knew November would be the finale. The finale. And I was like, really? And she was like, she's like, I feel like it's going to be on TV. She's like, I feel like something crazy is going to happen. You need to prepare yourself. Have you ever seen TV? And she, yeah, <laughs> and she was like so excited for me. And I didn't give her oh, anything because I, I just want to see if she kept going. But she knew me to my core. It was bizarre. I love that. And you know what? There will always be people like, like, not someone like Jason because I don't know what Jason said but there will always be people that are like she obviously knew who you were and it's like no like you know when you see someone you're like no those bitches had had no idea no idea yeah and they're like well you're in LA and blah 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 like I'm not like a a A-list celebrity I was on a reality show seven years before that you're definitely B-list I think (laughs) you don't think Shannon what's B-list B-list is like like A-list is Brad Pitt oh okay B-list is like um I don't got now I'm blanking on who would be like B-list. would Kristen Cavallari be B-list yeah yeah and then she'd be like BC 
Really? Well, because I picture so what do you be like yourself. Like, oh, okay. Um, B is like up and coming stars, like Sydney Sweeney, or is she a list? She's a list. Sydney Sweeney's a list. Okay. B is like you're still Hollywood, but everyone knows you. Okay. And C is like really big time reality stars. Oh, so you consider yourself a C list? No, I consider myself D. Whatever. What you are like? You are the Bachelor franchise. Yeah, but. What, you, you know you are. What do you, you are? I you guess are. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I D- know you are. E seems more was, <laughs> Bitch, no, I'm J, which is fine. And I'm like, yeah, cool I'm out me. here rocking with the J's, and the J's are rocking with me. But I would definitely, if C's are the really important reality stars, you're C, my girl. Well, congrats. Congrats like, with a C. I don't think so. I think you are. I just have never thought that. Like, even when... It would be hard to say what you are. It's way easier to be self-deprecating. I'm like, I'm a J, LOL. Like, mostly, I'm probably more like a G. (laughs) But, like, if I'm being self-deprecating and funny in my podcast, I'm like, I'm an L. (laughs) I'm like, uh, I feel like I'd be like the E of podcasting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I am, I am like... Whatever, we can hype you up later. We'll just say I'm humble. She's an H. (laughs) Okay, fair. H for humble. I'm going to need you guys to take these next things I'm about to say very seriously because if you know me or follow me at all, then you know that I am the self-proclaimed, government-confirmed, seven-time award-winning queen of packing. Seriously, I am. And I have made just about every mistake that you can possibly make with luggage. I've tried them all so that you don't have to. And bar none, the best on the market is base. It's like Shay Mitchell, who's the creator of base, just reached into my brain and plucked out every single damn it that I have said in regards to anything packing or travel related. And then... They fixed it. The way that this luggage will solve all of your problems is insane. Beginning with my personal favorite aspect, the overweight indicator. Tell me why there's literally nothing more embarrassing than holding up a baggage line while every single judge Judy in the airport looks at the 15 pairs of underwear that you packed for a two day trip because your bag was overweight and now you gotta sit there and unzip your bag on the floor and take things out of it. Not anymore. The base luggage has this little red dot that'll come up if your luggage is overweight iconic it has got this like squishy almost like stress ball material cushion on the underside of the handle for comfort while you pull it and it glides like a dream because there's nothing worse than a suitcase that doesn't roll right it's like getting a grocery cart that doesn't roll right it just ruins your time then the weekender bag is iconic as an add-on to your luggage because it just slides right over to sit on top and every interior pocket you could literally think of Favorite thing for sure, though, is the genius underneath zipper compartment that shoes go in to save space. It's like, who thought of this? It's so good. Literally, they just thought of everything. But functionality aside, we've all seen Shay Mitchell, and she's about the most fabulous and fashionable gal there is. So you already know that base luggage is chef's kiss on the aesthetic side of things. Like, it looks so chic, so trendy, and it always matches the vibe. And we're always trying to be a vibe when we're traveling, you know? I simply will just never use anything but base luggage. They also just came out with so many cute colors in addition to their amazing classic colorways. I could honestly just talk about them for hours, but I'll get to the discount, okay? Right now, base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash probably. Go to basetravel.com slash probably for 15% off your first purchase. That's B-E-I-S travel.com slash probably. How do we know each other? Everyone was asking me that on my podcast or, or on my questionnaire. They're like, how did you guys meet? Was it through Worth and Cat? Or was it just because like I said, where I was like, oh my God, I know that girl. It's a really great question. I, I, I actually thought to myself, I bet Caitlin doesn't know. I don't know. I think I, maybe I we knew. we were all out one night. Of each other, but then I definitely got to know you yeah. through Worth and Cat. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. true. Right? Yeah, I would say that. You were out one night and I was with like the very Cavalry group and you were friends with them. I and remember we the all night. like we're on the, some rooftop at like losers, losers. or winners. Oh my losers. god, I remember this night. This night was actually I won't even bring it up anymore. Really? Oh, it was a bad one. No, it's fine. Actually, me, I'm like <laughs> I'm so not mysterious. I'm like fine. I'll bring it up again. <laughs> it was um, it was a night in which after that I had seen the the girl that was on the show, Brittany, that like does her and I just like had a little bit right. of a falling out, whatever. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and after that night, I remember seeing her being like, oh my god so great i'm like seeing her out more it's like getting very normal like i, I like you love guys were talking the norm we were okay it's very nice okay. it was like we love the normality and then like later on because nashville is such a small big town later on someone was <laughs> someone told me that she was like why is she everywhere like can she just go away like oh. she's always everywhere that i'm at like i don't want to see her i don't want to speak to her it's exhausting oh, like shoot. i want to which to be fair like everyone's allowed to say i don't want for that person in my life right. like you're allowed to be like i don't but i'm like we we were at losers. All of your friends are my friends. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember just being really upset and hurt about it because I was like, oh, I, I, I thought we were like 
getting along and like showing showing the world wrong like right we, we can, yeah we, yeah we're friends we could be like acquaintances and then she was like Skr. yeah and i was like but then i like did a like thing that i do sometimes where i just like spat not skinny but not fat oh she, she had me on her podcast literally and yeah she'll the get week it out of you. after and i always well yeah amanda will always get everything out of you but it was such like good bad timing because like i anytime i ever spoke about like very cavalier and anyone I was always like really nice and I was like you know like we were fighting on camera but honestly like she's a great person whatever whatever and I went on her podcast and I was like well honestly I recently just found out that she apparently like I was like oh, the apparently like, person <laughs> the little boy that's like apparently, apparently. I was like well apparently <laughs> <laughs> just like spat off and she did not like that that I talked about it on such a big podcast which did, you know what did fair I do that too I did that on hers too because I had th- three or two shots of tequila before I went on her podcast Love. and <laughs> then I was like what do you want to know <laughs> what do you want to know she's like everything yeah. <laughs> you're like i'll like, give it to I'll you i'll give it to you you want it i'll give it to you that is so funny what a good i mean she's a great one i always think about like really big celebrities like which which um podcast they would choose to like divulge oh. information i'm like it's got to be a good one well call her daddy gets everything and oh. everyone and i just Duh. i want to know how do they pay their guests or does it That's has she just question. gotten no, one good not. guest and then the rest come on i think her, i think it's like the i think she is who she is because like of all the scandal that happened and then she became such a huge name that everyone knows the shock factor that comes with going on call her daddy is like yeah. the pinnacle however i will say something that i've noticed and i could be super wrong and no one will listen to this podcast so that will probably correct me from her team but um <laughs> uh because i'm know. an l lister <laughs> but uh i i do think that like a lot of people that go on her podcast which makes sense like are releasing a book or coming out with a whatever which that's true i get that's why you're going on a podcast but i think it's pretty somewhat obvious that like pr people and publicists are handing her a list of questions and being like you can't deviate from this because like some of the stuff i'm like oh they just this feels like a very prepared interview like not in like it seems very very katie couric and like i don't like when podcasts are like that i I know they're more conversational and stuff but even some of them like gwyneth paltrow is pretty open and on on call her daddy yeah but to me Gwyn- i would just see clips i never listened to it. gwyneth strikes me as one of the only celebrities that if she was like okay so do you guys have a list of things gwyneth would be like no ask me whatever really she stri- gwyneth strikes me as someone that would be like i'm down with whatever yeah she talks about just like only eating bone broth for like yeah, 12 hours out of the day so like she doesn't care she's like I, like what, where was she just on a podcast where she's like oh my god the 90s how fun talk about doing blow with no one noticing like elite and she was like <laughs> on the late night show and everyone oh, really? was like what the fuck i kind of like, like that yeah dude i have fun with it but i'm like oh, yeah. she, she just like strikes me as someone who's just like yeah whatever that's funny yeah gwyneth gwyneth i know who would be your dream podcast guest um actually people always ask me this and i'm yeah, always like me too and i'm i i always like it's like who could you if you have dinner with anyone dead or alive i'm like i don't know my mom i love her um <laughs> we always have the best time yeah. <laughs> love her food <laughs> um i don't know like like someone really cool and big like i would like to talk to miley cyrus on mm. instagram people tell us me we have the same voice all the time I could see that. So that could be cool. Maybe we would do audio only and no one would know who was talking. P- Wait, you do sound like her. People always have told me that my whole life. Like when I was like 12. Like you sound like Hannah Montana. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, I just Weird. heard it. I, I don't just know if it's heard the inflection it. People in tell voice. me that I look like her all the time. Oh, I could see that. And b- me back the in mouth. the day and her back in the day, we did look alike. Like us now, we might look a little different. But like when oh she was. Oh my God, was... you do look like her. <gasps> really? No one ever tells me I look like anyone. Never once. Oh, that's a lie. Once a year. And I drive it so hard into the ground that it's the most obnoxious thing in the world. Once a year, someone random will be like, you know, you look like Jessica Biel. <gasps> and I'm always like, I could see that. I don't personally see it. I want to see it so bad, but I don't see it. But I always will screenshot it, post it on my story and be like my yearly reminder that I am <laughs> Justin Timberlake's wife. <laughs> Just your reminder that I look like her. I and like Justin like, Timberlake sucks, though. No, I he? couldn't agree more. Yeah, but Jessica Biel seems awesome. She does seem awesome. I sat across from her at a restaurant in Vancouver when I was like, cool 25 i want to say and i remember staring at her it was like this booth and then the doorway and then another booth but it was glass so we could see each other through the entrance and i remember like staring at her and going wow that girl has no makeup on and she is a oh, 10 what a treat and and then Me, i was like rimmed could never <laughs> oh then i realized she was like this bitch is staring at me and then i realized who she was and i was like oh you didn't know who she was when you were no. just like she's beautiful and oh. then i figured it out later and i was like oh god oh well that's even a funnier concept that you're like what a gorgeous person i can't like she should be a celebrity and then like is a celebrity i get anywhere from like miley cyrus to the girl from like flipper flop home show to like megan fox if i'm really dolled up 
and you can see the megan fox one did but, you meet her at the sports illustrated thing no i wanted to get a photo same thing with like the shit dress that you order online and you get what you get in the LOL. mail i wanted to take one with megan and that her would, look like a 10 and then i was like that would have been really Anna funny and Judy. <laughs> i wanted to be like this like toe beside her no you would never look like a toe beside her but i understand the concept of the of the funny and that would have been funny it would have been funny but did was you she, see like, the machine gun off? kelly no Oh, Why didn't yes, you see her? in the party she was. But we were on the red carpet at the same time because I oh, knew I to saw. show up late. You were, you were, you knew she'd show up late, so you showed up late. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> oh my God. Crazy. I'm like, I'm like perpetually punctual. I'm uh, like always on time. I'm always late and I'm classic big. fucking G lister. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm early. They're like, perfect. <laughs> Go ahead. Go on in. Start the party. I was at a Revolve uh, red carpet thingy one time or like it was a, an event. I don't know. And I like got invited by Revolve. I was there for Revolve. And then um, there was like a step and repeat kind of area where yeah. like all the celebs were going. And I was like, I think someone did pull me aside. I think I was like, oh, could I grab one of those? And they're like, of course, of course. And then when I went up there, I actually, I had my friend, I was like, get a, I was like, get a little, get a little BTS of like the photographers taking my photo, asking my name, yeah. whatever. She's like perfect on it. And so she, thank God, I asked her to grab BTS because I'm not kidding. The second I walked up, and this is Revolve. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Right. The second I walked up there, the photographers were like, oh, perfect. We can take a break. And they like all put their cameras mm. down. Like I could mm. tell the girl, the like um, Revolve, like connect, like uh, liaison yeah. was even like, oh, guys, pretend. Like I, I was like, and then I, I, I just was like, my friend that was there, I was like, perfect. Could you come closer to take the photos? And she was like, of course. And we just like played along. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. I love a humbling moment though. Yeah, I'm no Olivia Culpo, but like, could you take a fucking photo? <laughs> just one? Could you even just pretend to be like, what's your name? I know, like, don't put your cameras down. It's not Getty images. They're just going to yeah. like some little Dropbox they're giving us. Like, could you give me the Dropbox link? One thing about me, I am absolutely not trying to go to the grocery store. Mostly because, like, why is it that you feel like you always run into everyone that you don't want to see when you're at the grocery store? You know what I mean? Like, hello, my ex-boyfriend and three different girls who hate me. Okay, but honestly, besides that point, it is just not convenient. I am totally team have your groceries delivered, especially because it cuts out all the unnecessary purchases that I tend to make when I'm scrolling aimlessly down the aisles. Also, grocery shopping hungry. All of it is just, it's dicey. So my favorite thing to use is Thrive Market. I've been using them for years now, and it's my favorite because it also ensures that I'm ordering healthy groceries. I'm also a huge snacker, so like if I'm going to be snacking, I want to be snacking healthy. There really are so many healthy alternatives to food that I've discovered while using Thrive's grocery subscription service. Some of my favorite brands they have are Amy's, their mac and cheese can do no wrong, Four Sigmatic, Primal Kitchen, The Honest Kitchen, and tons more. They also have way more than just food, by the way. They've got bath, body, beauty, all of it, delivered right to your door and with some serious savings. Now, me personally, I'm like a real visual kind of gal. So when I'm on Thrive Market's website, I love that they show you the amount you're saving on your groceries right there on the website. They even tell you the percentage off that it is. You really do get such better prices with Thrive than you would at any normal grocery store. My last order had a total savings summary of 34%. Like that's so much money off. They've also got a price match guarantee, which I love. You can curate your shopping experience too to your dietary preferences as well. So that saves so much time. If you only want to see like gluten-free options, keto-friendly, non-toxic cleaning supplies, etc. Boom, just click of a button, enter that in, and it'll tailor the website pages to show you just that. My favorite, favorite thing about Thrive Market though, is knowing that when you join, you are helping a family in need with their one-for-one -one membership matching program. You join and they give someone who needs help the groceries to feed their families. I truly love when I see big businesses giving back like that. So Thrive Market, amazing, amazing thing you're doing. I also have a discount code for you guys, of course. Join Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash probably for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash probably. Thrivemarket.com slash probably. That actually was something that I was very surprised at when I was standing there because I saw a girl while I was walking in that I knew and she was going in line to go on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Kaylin. And we like gave a hug and they were like, we're shutting down the carpet. And I was like, let's go in. And then the girl that was running the carpet was like, Kaylin Brissa, you want to go? And I was like, yes. For the Sports Illustrated thing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I was like, yes. And I was so shooky when all the photographers were taking photos because I was like, they don't fucking know who I am. Yes, and do. Well, no one guy was like, what's your name again? <laughs> well, it's nice that they ask. But the, the lady's supposed to be there like telling the names. Yeah, true. But then all the cameras stopped 
and like moved over and everyone was like and oh, i was like oh god and then i looked and it was machine gun kelly and i was like sick. yeah okay yeah, yeah okay. that makes sense <laughs> okay and he like looked at me and i was like no you go ahead he's like i'm so sorry and i was like no the you go ahead it was so nice anytime he's like really nice like that i'm like oh colson oh i know and like, they were just- calling him colson what's his real last name Baker. They're like, Mr. Baker. And I was like, Mr. Baker. Yeah. LOL. They're like, Mr. Baker, look over here. And I was like, who the shit? And I was like, oh, Machine Gun Kelly, Machine Mr. Baker. Gun and then I, well, I don't know why I do this, but when I met the Kardashians, I bowed down to them and I did the same to him. And I was like, no, no, you go, you go. Those are valuable people. I, I I like that. No, I like to play it cool. That was not cool. Yeah, I do. Actually, I was listening to your podcast with Amanda. And when she was like, she's so funny because she's so like literal and she really does like make you think when, yeah. when she was like, well like you were like yeah i got this job at a restaurant to like kind of like get my foot in the door and meet all these famous people and she's like so what would you do when you meet him you're like oh nothing i'd pretend i didn't know him she's <laughs> yeah. like so how is that helping you <laughs> and you're like, but your mindset was the same as mine where i would be like no because they'll be like she's so cool chill and hot and totally could be the star of our movie why don't we invite yes! her to come sit down with us they'll get another waiter like yes! i live in delulu world like that me too that so, was same thing happened i get up. that brett ratner do you know who that is no who is it? he's like this big director in hollywood like years ago he did like um x-men and okay. all these big movies and he was really good friends with michael jackson and he was, he came and sat in the restaurant i worked in and all these people kept coming out to me and be like brett ratner wants you to be in his movies and i was like here we go oh it's this my, is time my time to shine yep and he was like do you want to sit down and have dinner with me after i was like yes and then he kept looking he dated lindsey lohan for a while okay and she's been in movies he, she's been in movies for sure and so i was like maybe i could date him and i'll be an yeah. x-men and he was like you have like crazy eyes for x-men and i was like yeah you do though well thank you wow okay but, i actually but then he just was trying to sleep with me and damn it should have slept your way to the top <laughs> i couldn't i can't so many people have <laughs> i know but maybe if he was like good looking and sweet but he was creepy and yeah, what's he look like can i get an image can i get a visual please what's his name brett brett ratner i'm so sorry but brett ratner let's see i went out let's with see him. if i would sleep my way to the top with him nope <laughs> <laughs> I <told> you. unfortunately <laughs> i told you unfortunately everyone's it's got a bar a no for me dog <laughs> yeah even That's and i was like 22 and no i mean he's real, not like, like i really wanted it not enough no not enough you didn't want it enough i didn't Caitlin. want that's when i was like ah oh, maybe it's not in the cards for me oh my god these <laughs> are like young photos of him brett oh, ratner now yeah, sorry oh look up now. guess who's definitely not gonna be listening to this podcast brett ratner yeah he's definitely you know what? Not. when you are an l list celebrity like me you could talk about whatever the fuck you want because nobody's listening you gotta get scared though because what if there's one no headline and it goes and shannon ford says she would never sleep with brett ratner <laughs> <laughs> write it up <laughs> write it up <laughs> Sorry, Bretsky. You know what's so funny is he called me one time after we had like went to dinner that night. He called me, and then he's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, oh, "I'm just riding the bus uh, on my way to teach uh, like five year olds hip hop." And he was like, "Trying on purpose to sound a little le- like no. lower to like be like, save me, help me." I'm no, on the bus. I was just You're actually Delulu. on the bus. Okay, <laughs> the bus. and I was like, and, and he was like, "You're riding the bus," and I was like, "Yeah." And then we like literally, literally, am I okay? Didn't talk after that. <laughs> no, you didn't talk after that? No. Do you think it was the bus that did it for him? I think so. But do you know Chris Kattan, like from SNL? No, nope, but here I go. I feel like I, I'm, I'm he wildly He was just attra- on Celebrity Big Brother. He's like, he used to be on SNL, like in the OG cast. Chris Kattan. I'm like, tr- I'm really not oh, trying I, to name I know drop because these are not cool name drops. I didn't but. know. I didn't know his name but i know yeah. who this is yes it was me chris Catan, and brett ratner i have a photo of the three of us out at the club one night and they played the song what is love and he was in the night at the roxbury and we were like all doing this and it was very iconic oh but gosh too this young. man looks <laughs> he's not well i don't think elder yeah i don't think he's it's well anymore like like he's sick i think so he looks mm-hmm. sick mm-hmm. i don't wish sickness upon him uh-uh. but he doesn't look well i saw him in the airport like two years ago jason was with me at first he was like and he was like hey oh that's nice but i don't know if he's just being friendly yeah could but i was like he doesn't look well he doesn't look like memories on the forefront of his mind no i don't he's not oh honey (laughs) oh oh listen there's a price to pay for fame yeah drugs will get you drugs will get (laughs) you i i'm very open about talking about doing drugs have you ever done mushrooms we can cut this out if you don't want to talk about oh i don't care i've talked about it on my podcast yes um i did mushrooms at cleo's wedding in mexico recently for the first time or just in general it was the second time but the first time did nothing to me oh okay and this time are you talking about microdosing or did you eat like a cap and a stem oh it was like um powder like a handful of powder what and it was from this 
That sounds like tea people try to sell you on Instagram. That's what like it felt lion's like. Lion's mane. I was like, like, I don't, and I didn't believe, I was like, sure, it's probably like nothing. Did you take too much? Um, I didn't get sick. Obviously. <laughs> I, I, I almost did. She just did. felt ill for 48 hours <laughs> yeah. and refused to throw I up. I almost got sick and I was like, will not throw up. Uh, but I was. At a wedding? Oh no. And at your, like one of your. But I made sure it was wedding? at the very end of the night. Okay. And then everybody was dancing and jumping in the pool and they're dresses anyways did you lick the powder like yeah like how much a lot i took way too much molly and abiza Ooh. and i did one of these i went and i have like long like <gasps> crack nails throw- and i went like this and i like i like stuck my whole like the whole all the molly was like covering this entirety of my finger and in my nail uh, also molly she's like battery acid and i yeah. was like and like all the men that were around that were doing molly were like oh, oh no <laughs> that's a lot really? i was like i know <laughs> <laughs> I was not fucking okay, dude. I'm I was now. not okay. I am shook that I get to work with this brand because I have been a lover of their products for so long. You know me, I am the consumer. So Element is legit the queen of electrolyte replacement. It's spelled like L-M-N-T. By the way, I feel like you've probably seen it before. I got turned on to them by none other than Taylor because she was obsessed with them during her pregnancy. Biggest thing that sets them apart from the other electrolyte drink mixes, there's absolutely no sugar, zero. Just salt to replace all our lost sodium. There's no artificial ingredients. There's no coloring, no fillers, no gluten. Honestly, just no BS. The reason it's so important to have electrolytes in our system, by the way, is because it facilitates so many different functions in our body. Like I didn't know how many things conductive of the nerve impulses, hormonal regulation, nutrient absorption and fluid balance. And I know y'all know I am no scientist and all those things sound way above my pay grade, but let me tell you what I do know. They're important. So I personally love chugging some element mix in my water before and after I drink way too much wine and it's always helped me not have a headache the next day. Also, it helps with sleeplessness, so I love that because sometimes I just do not sleep good, so this is great for that. James is obsessed with Element after his workouts because when you sweat, you're losing electrolytes. It's the loss of sodium, so we got to replace that so that we do not get cramps and fatigue and all those other annoying things that come with working out. Everyone, by the way, everyone is using Element, so jump on the bandwagon, okay? Get on the train. We got pro athletes using it. We got Olympic athletes using it. Even Navy SEALs drink it, so you know it's the good stuff. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets for free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash probably. The deal is only available through my link, by the way. So you have to go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash probably. Also, Element offers no questions asked refunds. So try it totally risk free. If you don't like it, share it with a salty friend and they will give you your money back. No questions asked. You've literally got nothing to lose. Drinkelement.com slash probably. How long does that last? I I still feel like the effects are still in play. <laughs> I feel like it's been 82 I, I, years. It's, it's been 24 years. Yeah. No, I mean a day and a ha- a day and a half. Like I was not okay for a day and a half. I was so like the day after I was just like this, like I was blank, which was scary for me because I, I feel like I'm a pretty like outgoing and like vibrant yeah, person. Yeah, so for and you I was to be like a Bleh. shell. Ooh, I don't like that. I was a shell. That's why I don't like drugs. I feel like I get really bad anxiety and depression after. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The come down. The come down was the come down from the mushrooms wasn't bad. Uh, They say there's not really one, but I mean, you took too many, I guess. I took too many, but I also had I was drunk when I did it, and you're not supposed to drink. Yeah, you're not supposed to. So I was in my bridesmaid dress, and I'm. I did it and then we're dancing and then we all go back to the lobby and everyone's going to get changed and go in the pool or just jump in in their dresses. And all of a sudden I was like, oh shit, I don't feel good. Oh, and no. I was like, oh. I'm like, actually it's giving me anxiety because I know the feeling know. Of where like the wave hits you where you're like not in control anymore and you're like, oh, fuck. But this is a kind of a happy ending. Okay. So I was freaking out and the guy that gave them to me, he is like a um, energy healer, breath work coach. That would have been really helpful in my, yes. when I took too much Molly. And because Jason gets paranoid and Jason was like, are you okay? (laughs) And I was like, oh God. I was like, all I need you to do is just like embrace this with me because there's no going back. Yeah, yeah. And then the guy was like, you need to go to the beach. And I just walked down to the beach by myself and I just started peeing myself (gasps) walking down the beach. And then I was like, well, I might as well go in the ocean. And I just walked in the ocean in my dress. At night? Yep. Weren't even afraid of sharks even a little bit? Nope, not even a little bit. I would have thought they were beautiful. I probably would have tried to kiss them on the mouth. The the waves were like rolling in and I was like, this is the most beautiful thing. And then I just started laughing hysterically because I was like, I know how crazy I am right now. That's so funny. And I like felt the sand and I like laid there and just like looked at the stars. And then I went in the pool and then I went to bed. 
and then just like you got sleepy and you did to go to bed yeah. that is a very happy ending yeah so you just had like a moment of panic a moment of panic i had this moment um and i talk about it actually i get like a really visceral um when i retell the story i and anna grace obviously yeah is like your body she tells me that like my intuition is through like actual bodily feelings yeah so like and I, i've gone to another psychic before too that told me like when people say like i have a gut feeling he's like your gut feelings are like very intense for a reason like always follow them but not like a thought but like like physically in yeah. your gut like mm-hmm. if you're like i feel I ill about this yeah. like there's a reason yeah so anyways i i sometimes when i retell the story i get like a visceral like bowel movement feeling where i'm like i feel like i could have diarrhea from retelling the story but when i um did too many too many too meths. many mollies too many mollies <laughs> when i did too many meths or mollies whatever it was i actually i accidentally did meth in tulum <gasps> yeah meth meth well, what Cat and Worth were there, but they had left like the day before. I did you just get off that. someone from the beach or something? Uh, it was a bathroom attendant. So like uh, super quick, like oh god, Delulu. <laughs> it me like yeah, like what was a I thinking? Bathroom attendant. A bathroom attendant was like, oh, we wow. have this stuff, and I was like, perfect. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh, I am. So, I would never because like I wasn't. I'm like, not judging you, but I would never. No, I don't no. yuck your yum nobody should ever like and here's the thing like i in my head i was like i would never take cocaine or like so i was thinking like hard like heroin like i was like i'm not getting gross drugs from bathroom attendant i'm doing like fun drugs like molly like bitch oh it was no that is so scary (laughs) they just saw me and were like we'll market this as molly like yeah yeah so no it was terrible whatever i can dive into that another time but um when i did too much molly i had i tried to lean in so hard because like i knew i did it right yeah and so like i I remember the lights when the lights went like from like they just went crazy They're yeah like, bing, bong, boom. yeah and i was like whoa the lights look crazy now and then all of a sudden the music that was like unts, 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 <laughs> all of a sudden went to unts, unts, unts. and i was like, like okay. and i was like weird and then i was like oh it hit and then i had this like rush of panic like i could like sweat thinking about yeah, it yeah and then i was like we- you took the drugs you want to feel this way. You took the drugs you want to feel this way. You yeah. like it. And then I was like, yeah, the lights are cool. But like really inside, I was like, the lights are stressing me out. Oh my and God. then I was like, no, 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 the music sounds better. And then I was like, the music is stressing me out. And then like people were like laughing in the background. Like they were like, ha, ha, ha. All of a sudden they're clowns. Yeah. That to me they were like <laughs> oh my god I hate and it. I was like I was like oh like my hands were just like I, I was like going it. into rigor mortis I was like I am so stressed out oh my gosh no. and then um it wasn't Anna Grace wasn't there that would have been a fantastic but there was this like I still call her I think I actually recently talked to her and she was like yeah you can say my name at the beginning I was like I won't say your name but her name was Marley and I should always like shout her out because Aww. she literally just like came up to me and was like had a piece of ice in her hand and like put it on my wrist and was like are you okay and I was like yeah I'm fine because I like, didn't know her and I didn't want right. to be the weirdo yeah and she was like okay like you good talk to me and I was like yeah I'm fine I think I'm about to have a panic attack oh and no. she was like okay and I was like actually I think I'm gonna throw up and she was like okay she was like no worries she was like let's what go to the bathroom angel. and like she wasn't like oh shit you're about to throw up she was See, like that's jason yeah that's- i need i need a marley yeah marley was i'm like marley and me like i'm literally yeah. gonna name my first child marley but she was just like oh no worries she's like let's go to the bathroom and i was like okay and she was like yeah it's right over this way let's go and i was like okay she was like my shaman of doing too much molly what an angel no, she was and then i just like the whole like projectile vomited sorry oh you did so much and then she was like oh my god you're fine it's the come up like this happens sometimes and she's and like, then you were fine she's like you're gonna feel really grateful after this and I was like okay and then afterwards it was the craziest thing I was like I'm so grateful for you Marty ah. I'm so grateful for you Marissa I'm so grateful for everyone in my life and then I was like mm. I'm gonna throw up again. No, oh, no, and the panic came back. Yeah, no, it just kept going from like here to here to here. And then Marissa, we were together on the trip. She did not do drugs, yeah. and she's just looking at me. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay, so uh, she's probably like, oh my god, you're freaking me out. And then uh, I, she said I like couldn't stop smiling. Like I just had this like, <laughs> like, like, like I was, she took a photo of me. It's so creepy. Oh, my. sorry, I'm retelling podcast stories, but maybe you guys haven't heard this one in a while. But yeah, that it was, is it was drugs are drugs and me like alcohol and me yes drugs and me no. I just, but I'm like a Pokemon. Like I got to catch them all. Like I just want to try them all once. That is good for you. I'm not as adventurous with drugs. Like Meth? I did don't co- try it. I won't. Um, Personal preference. I never did cocaine when I was like 18 and I like hated it. Yeah. People like me and I kind of am going to go ahead and say people like you. I don't think we're meant to do cocaine. No, I'm I not meant to I don't do think cocaine. Pe- people don't like me when I do Adderall. I don't think people would like me if I did cocaine. I can't do Adderall either. I can't. People are like, you are not the person i know like and weed like. gummies all day yeah fun love a weed gummy 
love any kind of gummy, but like the harsh stuff. Yeah. I'm tough. like, Bland! I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. And then the next day I'm like, cool. I don't want to be on this earth. Yeah. No, it's the come downs are really rough ski. Yeah. It's not for me. It's not for me either. My face sheet mask game has elevated majorly. I'm talking self-care to the max, baby. And there's quite literally nothing that I love more than binge watching a show while I sit with a little sheet mask on my face to give myself a little relaxation and also have amazing skincare working in action while I do it. Mediheal is absolutely going to be your one-stop shop for every amazing mask you can think of. They've gone viral for a couple of them, and they're currently Korea's number one best-selling sheet mask brand. My personal faves are the Collagen Essential Mask because it's going to lift and firm you, and we all want our skin to be firm, don't we? Yes. Yes, we do. They've also added like three times more collagen actives than Metahill's first generation mask for an even more intensive firming effect. So it's going to be leaving your skin so useful and so bouncy looking. Metahill also added a bottle of extra serum to their award-winning NMF Amipool mask. This mask is going to instantly relieve dry skin and it's going to boost hydration, leaving you moisturized with a dewy, glowy skin effect. And I personally have the world's driest skin, even in the warm summer months. So the Amipool mask has been a game changer for me. Listen, do yourself a favor and up your skincare game with MetaHeal's sheet masks. You will not be disappointed. Visit MetaHeal's official Amazon store and save 35% on select sheet mask 10 packs. 10 of them. Enter code probably at checkout. Oh, and also totally go enter MetaHeal's TikTok giveaway. It's so good. They're giving away so many masks. Go to MetaHeal US on TikTok and enter to win their 30 mask giveaway valued at $70. All you have to do to enter is follow MetaHeal US on TikTok and like their giveaway post to enter to win. Three lucky winners will be selected. So go make all your friends do it too so that you can be chilling with your new fancy face masks. Duh. I, I wrote all these actually very legit notes and we've covered some of them. So. <laughs> That's not always how I do. <laughs> Why don't we dive in? Um, okay, wait, I did talk to you about Amanda's podcast and I want to reference it one more time because also I feel like when I had Amanda on my podcast, I went and listened to what? Oh, she had done not, uh, she, sorry, she's not skinny but not fat and she had done the Skinny Confidentials podcast yeah. and I listened to it and I remember I was posting about it and she was going to come on my podcast the next day and she was like, what are you doing, homework? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, what? And I don't take my podcast that seriously. Like yeah. I'm not the, the homework notes kind of gal. Yeah. But I do, when I have someone like important, I never want to like ask them the same questions that they get asked a thousand times. Like, yeah. Like I don't really want to sit here and be like, so The Bachelor, like right. how did that all get started? Because like you could Google you and probably find like a podcast where you talk about that. Yeah, so, I talk about it a lot. Um, I obviously want to talk about that, but yeah, of course we, we can't actually, I don't really have much on here except for that you're so initiated and ingrained into podcast nation. I'm like, did you ever picture that for your life? Like, like dating Jason, like were you really like? Well, I want to go back to Bachelor Nation one more time, just yeah. one more again. Oh, I don't care. No, but like you, but you were like, I'm you. You just liked Jason, or were you like Bachelor Nation just feels comforting to me? No, I wanted nothing to do with it. Okay, that yeah, that was my question. Oh, I'm like, no, I feel I was, like you didn't mean to. I found my journal the other day that I've been looking for, and it was in the back of my filing cabinet. And I found it two days you have ago. Filing cabinet? I do. You're 38. <laughs> I know. My dad said to me the other day, I was pulling some document out that he needed for something. And he was like, where was that? In a drawer? And I was like, yeah. He was like, you've got to get a filing cabinet okay. and make sure it's fireproof. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, we should, I should have a filing cabinet. It goes to show how much I use it because I have been looking for this you journal for okay, years fair. and I couldn't <laughs> find it. And so I, I got a new assistant and she was like, let me file this for you. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, oh, my journal where I literally opened it and I was like, Yes, because I've been telling Jason that I had this written down. He's like, no, you didn't. Why? It literally says, I do not want to date anyone from Bachelor Nation. I do not want to date any influencer. I do not want to date anyone that like cares about climbing a ladder or wants to start a podcast. Like all the things that he literally was. It's so funny because I, on this podcast, so not a super hard journal to find, said, I was like, yeah, I'm an ex-boyfriend. I'd really like to be like a corporate lawyer yeah. or like a, like someone that just doesn't, who's like, who are you? What do you do? That's funny. Okay. Yeah. Like I was like, like that's what I like realistically that would probably never work out like, yeah I know that's so then when I started talking to Jason and I was like oh well, because I was turned on because I was like oh he's in corporate America fair I was that like he's a banker V anytime of, James talks about like like numbers I'm like you know how to count yeah hot <laughs> yeah I was the same way and then he was like yeah I think I'm gonna take up like brand deals and I was like oh no oh no <laughs> 
he's slipping away. And then I was like, I guess I can't say no to that because, like, why wouldn't you? And then he was like, I think I'm going to start a podcast. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You're like, the journal. Where's the journal? <laughs> and then I was like, I specifically had this on my, like, non-negotiables. Uh, That's like, I yeah. feel like Joe from The Bachelor. I was like, oh, he's like hotter because he just wants to be a chef and make pasta sauce like he doesn't care about fame but like he does like, yeah, he, he does. just went on a show called the goat yeah I'm greatest like, I'm reality like, stars of all time yeah, yeah yeah like i'm like you do but yeah. like yeah there's something about like the image i'm like oh he just happened to find his way onto this show yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where he had to be interviewed he really, seven times he before really he does it. seem like he doesn't give a shit yeah which yeah. he doesn't and somehow he does at the same time which is how he thinks about me because i just had him on the podcast and that's what he said about me he's like I always thought you didn't give a shit, but you do, but you don't. And I'm like, that is very accurate. Do you know what I think you are? And I, I hope this for myself as well. I think that we, and actually I have this written down on my notes. Let's, let's, let's get read that. it verbatim. Ah. <laughs> I think I wrote down, um, oh, I was actually going to reference something that you posted on Instagram. It's actually not that important, but I, I liked how you just like addressed something and then like kept it moving. You weren't like, okay, how do I, like, from a strategic like standpoint, like really strategize this? You were like, you know what? Like, I didn't realize this meant that. And like, I'm so sorry. And like, just so you guys know if you ever make the same mistake as me like this is what it means and like wow i'm so glad y'all told me always tell me stuff by the right. way it was very like because i think and there's this quote i saw um i think i'm sure on instagram where it said cool will kill you yeah like like the cool factor like i i really try in my life to just be passionate insane and just like truly myself and give yeah. my all and i know that there are so many people out there that are like so turned off by that right and that's fine because like those people will always like be turned off by that they're they're like not my people always but like i really think the the act of trying to be cool will kill you i and i don't get like that. you're trying to be cool vibes from you at all so i think maybe that's what joe meant like you're never you're never trying to be too cool for anyone or it's anything like or any compliment situation ever given me because i've got some weird thing where i'm actually you know how i said i have therapy after this yeah that's actually something I should bring up. I'm like so turned off by people who think they're cool to the point where I like same hate them. Same. Like so sometimes if I'm driving my Bronco, I'm like, don't look at me. I'm not trying to be cool. Like I actually just really like the car. Like I feel embarrassed oh because I think god. people are gonna think I'm thinking I'm cool when I really just oh love my the god. Car. I just got that vintage truck literally for attention ah! and I like I will do anything for attention but I'm also like really self-aware yeah but like I was driving it it was like stalling it, like I was like hot because like the wind it's not like you're a super cool souped up like redone <laughs> yeah. like four million dollar Bronco like mine's like genuinely just a fucking like old car and I was like sweating and I was like god damn it ah, you've got to stop doing stuff for attention like you've got to like it's too much oh I used much. to be like that I used to want attention all the time and so I still sometimes do there's still times where I love attention no, but I also do have this like genuine like country mouse era inside of me where like yeah. I was like I can do this like I actually like the couple friends that have been in my car with me are like damn you really just backed that up like really well and I'm like yeah my dad would like have taught me that like totally. you know totally so like there like there's a party that wanted it and for the right reasons but there are so many other parts that wanted it for the wrong reasons but <laughs> yeah I just think like I agree with you like people that are trying so motherfucking hard to be cool it's, it's like so like transparent parent you're like i see right through what you're and doing transactional i'm yeah. like you're trying to be cool so i think you're cool so then i'll didn't do this they're like people that are chameleons for like like situations yeah they, that can change that much when yeah. i witness that when i witness someone be one way with me and one way with another i'm not like oh my god how cool you can fit in with anyone i'm like odd weird you just like shape shifted to fit into this situation that's funky it is funky I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> and same thing with um like people who try too hard to be relatable like Gag I hate me. that too when people are like oh relatable is like what's working on TikTok right now so I'm gonna just be like t but then it's trying to hard to be relatable well, it's so obvious I'm sorry yeah, it's, so, it's obvious. so obvious I hate it it's really really obvious yeah. it's very obvious okay there was this line and I know you're a Swifty like me right I am a Swifty okay so you said this on Amanda's podcast um and it gave me the same vibes as all too well 10 minute version obviously <gasps> yeah. um it gave me the same vibes. You know that line where she says, she's talking about like her dad. Yeah. And it says, um, he, like, you charmed my dad with self-effacing jokes. Um, but then he watched me watch the front door all night willing you to come. And he said, it's supposed to be fun turning 21. Yeah. You said something on, on Amanda's podcast where you were like, I was about, it was the day you met Jason. Yeah. And you were like, no one really knew that you and Sean had like really broken yeah. up. And like, you were in this Uber and you were FaceTiming your dad and you were bawling crying. And the Uber driver's like, never let someone speak to you like yes. that because you're on the phone with Sean. And I was just like, damn, I feel like you were like, to the outside world like like top of the world and then but realistically like your father and like your uber driver stranger was like 
oh my god this broken bird yes so like it just I, it gave me like that vibe that i was a broken little bird which Another you're afraid, thing of afraid of <laughs> i got them tattooed we talked about this when we were in london together yeah. i was like wait so talk to me about these tattoos you got of so birds even though you're really afraid stupid. of birds i'm so stupid see this is where i'm like see still dumb no i like them uh they but suit you that that's even happening like now in my life which is interesting because i still am like have moments of feeling broken or scared or anxiety and now I just am 37 where I go holy shit 27 year old Caitlin would have handled this so differently yeah and even like 30 year old Caitlin would have handled this so differently and that's why I get excited to turn 40 for those reasons because yeah. I'm like I can handle anything and so even when I'm like a broken little bird now I'm like but I know I'll be okay yeah yeah, yeah. And You've I'm gone like through so much. You're like, I know I'll make it to the other side. Yeah. Even if I go even lower from here or hit even more rock bottom, like I know I'm still going to be okay. And which is crazy. That's a really com when you can get to the place where you like see the light at the end of the tunnel and you know it's there. And I know that's like a struggle for a lot of people to remind themselves of the light yeah. at the end of the tunnel. But like when you can like convince yourself, even if you're faking it till you make it, like, yeah, I will come out on the other side. I will come out on this side. That's like a really special place to find yourself in. That's where I am. Because you can always like get through and like you know you're not saying there's not going to be a fucking roller coaster no. on the way to the light but like to know that the light is there and it's obtainable is a really good place to be in yeah like no matter what happens I just feel like it could go so everything could go so south and I still would believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel a reason why but I mean I've spent a week I've done 11 now years of therapy I did a week in Hoffman which is all oh like God, 13 to 15 hours of child work my friend told me to do that it's bananas yeah it's like the most enlightening thing i've ever she done she was in my like life. after two days i called everyone was like or like forced them to give me access to a phone and then told them i wanted to leave come pick me up and like everyone in my life was like you should just stay one more day and see if you can do it and, and she then did? she was like and it changed my life the forever. third day's the break yeah yeah okay yeah, day yeah. two i was like why am i here this is crazy yeah. and day three i was like crying in like somebody's arms like being yeah, rocked literally. back and forth and i was like i see the light yeah like it was crazy and now I do once a week, this girl, Courtney, she's in Canada. We do the, these yoga sessions where we do like crazy breathing and then we punch air. Is she the one that messaged you? Yes. About the free flowing journaling? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. We can end the podcast here because we've almost been talking for an hour, but I wanted to bring that up. Yes. Okay. Because you just posted about this and I messaged you yes. and I was like, you know, I, I always like, I'm, I'm like perpetually on Instagram. I should really like take a break, but well, and so <laughs> I, I like was reading. I just like, if I see like a long, people are, sometimes people scroll past when they see like a long thing. I'm like a novel perfect especially oh if it's from someone that doesn't usually novel yeah and I'm like I'm like going to so like I I, re I read it intensely and it was talking about like I really enjoyed it. it was like you know you should just like sit down you should just write free flow whatever comes to your mind next and if the next line is I don't know what to write next write that down just yeah. free write and I was like oh spiritual I love it I might not do it but I love it and then I <laughs> died laughing at the next part that was like explain the next part so and we did that at Hoffman too the free flow writing where yeah. you just write we actually did it for an hour and so we long. had to just not stop and it was just pages and pages of whatever I'm left-handed there'd be so much ink on my hand oh oh see and I get hand cramps and like Fair. I hold the pen really tight and it's a whole thing <laughs> do you clench um, your jaw I clench my jaw. That's why I get Botox there. Oh, it's, nice. Oh, it hurts to even do that. Um, but so this girl was like, do 10 minutes of put on a timer, put on this song and do 10 minutes of what I know is true. And it was like a really nice like doo -doo oh, it's, song. It's go uh, Gold Mom or something. I can't it's remember. It's gorgeous. It it's was a beautiful. gorgeous song. Yeah. So I just wrote for 10 minutes what I know is true. And then she was like, and then put on ACDC Thunderstruck. And for the whole song, sit in a squat position and punch the, the air. Whole song. And I was laughing, then crying, then punching, then I was mad. It was hilarious reading it. I pictured everything you're saying right now. Not even just you. Like, I pictured anyone doing that. It was and I hilarious. Was like, oh. My dogs were like, what's this bitch what doing? What the fuck is she doing? But then she said, after that, you just interlock your fingers and you rock back and forth while sitting on your butt. And she goes, now what emotion comes up? And I said, weirdly, I'm... Oh, no, it was after the ACD song. I go, weirdly, I'm mad. And then I went, wait, I didn't do the last part. And I started doing this. And then after that, she goes, now just journal for another five minutes, whatever comes out. How long did you do the finger guns rock back and forth for? Just for like very odd to 20 me. seconds. Oh, okay. And it was still to the end of ACDC it was supposed to be, so I re-put it back on. Oh, okay. And then I journaled and it was, she goes, and that's your truth. And it was all like, after being angry and then doing that, then my truth came out. And she was wow. like, yeah, it's, it was so powerful. Okay. I, yeah. need, I need to like 
I know you just posted on your Instagram like what to do the instructions and we're saying this now but like I need you to do like a I need a visual I will I will send you the one she sent me she's she was like sorry I'm just gardening but here and I was like oh my of god course, by the way of course she is she's gardening and she just gardening. sent me another journal prompt because we're working together tomorrow so I'll share that with you too I love but I think I'm gonna turn my Instagram into like a spiritual like grow with me into like I'm gonna just be I think a tree you should in 10 years. you should just be a shaman in case I ever do too much molly again I will I'll do that for you Perfect. as long as you don't throw up please don't throw up oops <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to throw up. Okay. Well, I feel like it started with that and we're ending with Yeah, you know, it's a great place to end. I'm going to have some more rosé and hopefully not vomit. Please don't. Cheers. This This is empty. It's bad luck. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for this gorgeous spades and sparrows wine. Thank you for having me. And also thank you um, for drinking my rosé and not throwing up. I would never throw this It's up. low sugar. All of my wines are low sugar too. Sugary stuff makes pe- me feel sicky. So this me is going to be fantastic. This is dry. It's crisp. It's cold. I love it. Notes of. Notes of spades and sparrows. Notes Thanks of whatever coming. the fuck you smell and taste. <laughs> Truly. Cheers. Love you. <laughs>